Hello and welcome to Once More With Feeling, Fallen Idols, the newest album from Australian power metal outfit, Lord. Now, this was an instance of... I didn't know this album was coming out. Um, chalk that up to people not updating the necessary channels frequently enough and the various algorithms that you have to contend with where all the news that's actually useful to you doesn't come up. Um, what ended up happening was I was looking through the upcoming releases and starting to despair because, well, I'll put it like this, the one interesting band, well, there were a couple of interesting bands, but I wasn't sure about one of them material-wise, and the other was Skillet. I like Skillet, no problem with them, but I don't want to have to deal with the religious crowds. Being an agnostic, that was... So, I decided I'd take a break from trying to find stuff on the wiki that I could review, um, just started scrolling through Facebook and I found a post. A post that Lord had very cheekily made asking if they should tell someone that they... So there was a post that was listing all the various bands that had album releases in August and Lord cheekily went, should we tell them we've just released an album? And I... I was sort of like, wait, Lord's released an album. Clicked to their page, found the video for the first song on the album, United Parentheses Welcome Back, watched it, and I immediately went, yes, this, this is what I'm reviewing. I, I was sort of like, this is, this was what I was this was the sort of thing I was wanting, because whilst I do cover all manner of genres, I am very much inclined to metal, especially power. Power and thrash are my two special, special places in my heart. And Lord leans more towards the new wave of British heavy metal side of power metal dy dynamics and everything. And that is very much my jam. And my initial reaction to this album was I loved it from start to finish. Um, there were a couple of points where I was sort of like, mm, this isn't as strong as the rest of the album. But there, was, there wasn't a single song that I didn't like. So... Let's just get straight into it with the opening track, United. That's a great statement of purpose. So, uh, the overall feel of the album, and at least how it came across to me, was presenting itself as this is this is our lives. This is what being on the road is like. This is what we've had to contend with to get to where we are, we've had to deal with all the naysayers and the questions about whether we're going in the right directions and being able to say, actually, yeah, we are victorious in this and welcome back. So, United, parentheses, welcome back. I feel like it Welcome Back feels like more of the accurate title to the song because it's been six years since they released their last album. So it is sort of a mission statement of, yes, we're back and we're better than ever. And it's a very great, forceful, explosive, you know, it, it comes at you very fast, very sort of, oh my god, it's, this is how you open an album. You grab the audience by the throat and you make sure that you're saying, this is the sound that you're getting. It gives a very good barometer of 
what the rest of the album is like. Going on from that, we've got Immortal. Uh, it slows things down by a gnat crotchet. By that, I do mean it's only ever so slightly slowed down and it's still very weighty and it's one of the songs I lean more towards because it's it's much more layered in metaphor using sort of the imagery of a great damned beast which quite often those in the alternative crowd particularly metal fans will often feel like they'll feel damned and rejected and so you will have this overarching feel of well, I might as well lean into that. It really helps to bring to the forefront the idea that this is all sort of how they feel about their careers and about their lifestyles within metal. Uh, next, we've got the title track, Fallen Idols. Not one of my favourites, I'll admit. I feel like it's actually one of the weaker songs on the album. With that said, it does maintain the overall feel of the album. It definitely keeps this whole idea sort of... Within metal, we've had... If I'm interpreting this right, I could easily be reading this wrong. Um, but in metal, we have had a lot of people leave us in unfortunate circumstances but the music is still there and it still inspires it still drives people to create and it really brings brings forth that idea wilder than the wind that is much more nwo bhm sound if i was told that they were listening to a lot of Iron Maiden when they wrote that, I wouldn't be surprised. And that's not a bad thing. Like, Iron Maiden, whilst I, I will admit I am actually more of a fan of when Bruce Dickinson was doing his solo work, I still love Iron Maiden. And if you're evoking that feel, you're definitely doing something right. And that kind of that and the subsequent song, Nod to the Old School, feel like part and parcel. They feel they're complementing each other as sister tracks. Nod to the Old School is very much making a statement of what has created their influences, what has brought them to where they are. And if you know your old heavy metal, then you'll be able to go, ah, that sounds very similar to Can I Play With Madness, Rhyme of the Ancient Mariner, uh, The Trooper. You've got a lot of feels from there. I like that they're using old sounds, but doing their own spins on them and using that as a way to explain that they're where they are because of the old, but they want to make sure that they're doing their own thing as well. Chaos Reigning, one of my favourite tracks on the album. That really does feel like a sort of chaotic storm. I won't lie, part of the reason that's one of my favourites on the album is because of the fact that it's much more layered in metaphor and has this very apocalyptic sound that if you're on the alternative scene, you're definitely going to clue in on and it's definitely going to evoke sort of the much more furious but resilient and um, defiant feelings that you will very often have. Absolutely love the track. I would say if there was one track on the album that you were going to specifically listen to it for, it would be Chaos Reigning. And that's partially from personal preference and partially because of what other people have said. It seems to be a common thread that that's a favourite. Counting Down the Hours, that is a very much, much more uh, overt song. It's, it taps into what you often find uh, bands and artists will talk about is the difficulties of being on the road and being away from your loved ones and how as much as you enjoy 
going through the touring process and everything, it is a struggle and a strain on the relationship and you will start to count the hours till you can actually be with your loved one again and in some cases you will end up lamenting the fact that your career has damaged and broken apart that relationship and how it's all you get dichotomies through the verses and chorus where it goes between looking forward to seeing your loved one again seeing your wife your girlfriend your boyfriend whoever it may be seeing them once again and it changes between choruses from how it can be that you're simply looking forward to it and it will be blissful and how you're counting the hours but that time never comes because of how your relationship has been damaged. Definitely got a soft spot for it. I, I like tragic love songs. Might say a bit more about me than I care to admit, but whatever. The Edge of the World. That's one of the other ones that I'm into minds about. I do like it. Great track, but it has a bit of a feel of a bonus track. Because the sound changes quite dramatically, there's a lot more of a black metal influence in uh, The Edge of the World. It feels more like it should have actually been placed either as a bonus track or right at the end. I won't deny that's probably just personal preference, but it does jar slightly with the rest of the album. Yeah, great track, but because it's sort of, it has this weird flow between power metal styles and extreme metal styles like the vocals and guitar work change between the two and it feels a bit off kilter compared to the rest of the album i'd be interested to see what other people have to say about that track in particular uh, next kill or be killed that and chaos reigning my two favorite tracks kill or be killed again has this much more apocalyptic feel and it brings to the forefront this idea when you're into metal, punk, rock, all that sort of thing. It's much more of a, you can either embrace the lifestyle, you can become part of it, you can actually foster the good feelings that acknowledging what you are a fan of can build, or you can end up being destroyed because you're trying to reject that part of your personality. As it probably is quite obvious, I have never rejected that, but I have known people who... You, you'll come across quite a few people who will use the turn of phrase, when I was into metal. And I, I've always found that quite a curious turn of phrase, and I've wondered if it it maybe it's that do like the music and they wanted to continue being into it, but peer pressure forced them out of it. I've always found it quite quite suspect when people say when I was into metal. It's a it's a bit of a questionable phrase. I I can understand growing out of bands, but growing out of entire genres, I question that. Lastly, Master of Darkness. I'm in two minds about that. One, it's a great track. It's perfect for bookending the album. It really brings home the overall mission statement. It works off the idea that when you're part of that scene, when you are a fan of the music, when you engage with alternative music, um, you are seen as a pariah and everything like that. And ultimately, when it comes to bands, they are effectively sort of the overlords and the masters of this this dark, evil scene that needs to be shunned. And it really works well off of that. However, 
My one complaint is that it means the album ends. Yeah, my one complaint about that song is the fact that listening to that song means that you've got to the end of the album. I suppose that is a good that is a good thing about it is it leaves me wanting more. And I'm never going to fault an album that leaves me wanting more. I suppose my one real complaint is that because of how it's designed, it feels like you are going to get a second album. So, I don't know, maybe release a special edition that's a whole... either demo tracks or tracks you didn't feel like. You know, do a Devin Townsend, give us the bonus, give us more. I I'd like to hear more. Even if it's just the demo cuts of the tracks. I, I, Because I find demo versions of songs really fascinating, like... Um, Godspeed on Devil's Thunder, uh, one of Cradle of Filth's albums. Um, the special edition of that had a lot of demo tracks, and the demo versions sound very different, but in some cases I prefer the demo version, so I would be very intrigued to hear what the demo cuts sound like. And I'm always fascinated to hear songs that didn't make the cut on the main album. Like, there is a wealth of material that Devin Townsend has released, which I really love. In some cases I've enjoyed more than the tracks on... Again, I've enjoyed the cut material more than the tracks on the actual album. But none the more for that. This album perfectly bookends, it leaves you wanting more, and... Ultimately, none of the tracks are bad. Love the album. There's just, there are ones that are much stronger than others. And um, overall, I'd give this album a 4.5 out of 5. I'm definitely happy to say, welcome back.